All right, welcome in to another film review here on the O-Line Committee, where an idiot fan, myself, Phil Mackey, gets to sit down and show film and ask dumb questions to two former NFL offensive linemen, Jeremiah Searles and Alex Boone. And so I know you guys, like, I can tell you guys get more excited when we focus on how to stop things from happening in the trenches. Like, we've Mm -hmm. done some quarterback reviews, Rodgers and Jordan Love. But today I present to you Brian Flores' defense – and I want to know from you guys, offensive linemen, how do you stop it? How do you deal with the chaos, the crazy looks? What are teams going to be dealing with uh, with Brian Flores as the Vikings defensive coordinator this year? Much different than what Ed Donatel was doing uh, last year in 2022. So oh, I'm pumped for it's this. It's not going to be a sit around and wait and see what happens defense. Like Correct. we're just going to yeah. wait and see until they dunk it over the middle hey. 15 times, okay. 60 yards and a touchdown. To be fair. Eddie D came from San Fran. Listen, listen. He came from San Fran where we had Vic Fangio, also known as Dick Fangio, if you were mean, because that guy (laughs) was a real dick. Okay. So every time he'd walk by, he'd be like, offensive line just hanging around today. I'd be like, hey, what's up, Dick? He'd be like, it's Vic. I'm like, oh, my bad. Dickless. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Just a drive by shot. But I loved, loved Vic to death. One of the best guys. His biggest thing was you don't need to blitz. Like you don't need to do this. And that's why when they had Justin and all those guys, they were always like, we don't need to do this. So Eddie was always like, yeah, we don't need to. So remember when he went to Denver and they were still like, hey, we're just going to play 4-2, keep it coverage back. Everything's going to be fine because we have some pass rushers. And then all of a sudden it starts sliding down again. And then he came here and was like, well, we have these guys up front. We don't need to blitz. And it's like nowadays you have to throw everything but the sink at them. You must challenge everyone. Why? Assume that everyone over there is stupid and not paying attention and see what they know. And if by halftime you're like, wow, these guys are really smart, then you go, hey, time for us to play smart. We can't just keep throwing everything at them and not getting home. Now we need to start playing back and hopefully we get the ball back, right? But that was where Eddie and probably Vic saw the world was like, oh, we'll just get there in four. We'll twist the crap out of them and have fun with that. And it's like, Okay, that's great when you have four Hall of Famers up here, but when you don't, you you need to get crazy. You need to throw things at the wall like Jackson Pollock and be like, does it stick? No. (laughs) Give me something else. Here we go. We're going to bring in seven DBs and rush all seven of them. Like, whatever it takes to get there. There's a mask. There's a mascot at linebacker. What's happening right now? When you don't and you're an offense and you're just watching every touchdown you put up get just knocked back down and put back up and then knocked back down, you're like, God damn, this is just going to be a long, long year. And then every once in a while you'll get up on a shitty team and they're not going to claw their way back. And you know, people feel really good, but then you start getting into those heated games where you're like, we have no defense. Remember the Tampa game versus the Rams when it was like 59 to 55? People were like, what a great game. And I was like – DCs are definitely getting fired. Everybody <laughs> on that side of the ball is getting fired. That's when that, that's like, the, I'm telling you right now, it's the only time an offense can walk into that, into a team room and feel proud of themselves is when they're like, we won. And it was no thanks to you assholes who complained <laughs> to us all day. You guys suck. So Jeremiah, your uh, quick thoughts before we roll some, some tape here of the Brian Flores defense. I love it. You know, I I love it. I'm with Boone. You know, you create chaos. You test guys' knowledge of the game, right? It's it's really hard when you don't feel like you have werewolves up front that can get home in four to just line up and do the same thing over and over and over again and just keep watching paint dry as the quarterback stands back there in a clean pocket and dink and dunks for five, seven, five, seven. You know, and I think that what you see with a Flores defense is you're not going to see the same look twice. I think he's going to have a lot of what we used to refer to in the old line room as the flavor of the day which means it's a blitz that has not been put on tape. It's a blitz that was just put in that week, that was just for this scheme, just for this team. And when you start compounding those, you start making the team you're playing that week have to prepare for every single one of them, right? So now the blitz blitz pickup periods in week 8, 9, and 10 for that team are very extensive, very long, trying to think, which one am I going to throw at me? Which one do I have to see? And then they come out with the flavor of the day, which is a brand new one. And if that gets home, then, I mean, it starts scrambling. That's what you see from Flores is – He doesn't have really a ton of tendencies of going back to the same blitzes over and over again. He'll test you to make sure if, hey, if it worked last week, did you fix it? Did you show that you can stop it? Oh, you showed you can stop it? Sweet. I'll try and hit you with something new. Right. And I, and that's, and that's what he does such a great job of. And that's what I'm excited to see what he can do with this defense that really has one solid guy that I'd say, can I bet on getting home every single time if we don't blitz? 
but yeah, that's Daniel Hunter. But that's I, why yeah. you bring him in, right? That's why you yeah. bring a Flores in. And I think that Jay made a great point is whenever you show like by week eight, nine, ten, you have if you're looking at a defense that has seven, eight different styles of blitzes, you know in your mind, you're like, as long as we're gap sound on what we're doing. So it's almost like as long as you're a solid O line and you're like, we don't violate our rules ever, we stick to the code, you should be fine. And Jay's right. They're going to come out and they're going to test you. Oh, you picked it up? Well, here's a little nuance from that blitz that you probably haven't seen or thought about that we're going to add on to it now to see if you're ready for this. And as long as you're a gap sound O line and you're like, we stick to the rules, we stay to the code, you're fine. But when you start having doubt or say during that week, the coach was like, oh, blitz period just sucked. What's in the back of your mind on third down? Hey, we're all good, right? <laughs> we're all we're all clear on this shit, right? <laughs> like this is the wrong time to have a question, stupids, right? Well, and, and then you and, get and in there and you see a couple guys like deer in the headlights like, hey, what are the chances they pull that one blitz out? Like, you're pretty fucking good, dude. Pretty, you pretty got good. it, right? <laughs> and you got to think, too, like you don't need all five guys to be wrong. You just need one guy. Right, you just need one guy on the offensive line to guess wrong, right? Like, hey, I, I thought I was supposed to kick out here, and I really was supposed to squeeze in Don't. here, right? Like, and that's why when you change things up, especially if you're going against some young tackles or a young center or a young player at all, like they will attack that player and test. Be like, how good are you in all your rules? Right? Do you trust everything? Because I'm just, I just need you to screw up. I don't need that all pro left tackle to screw up. I need you to screw up to let my linebacker run free, and that's going to be the difference. Right, that it's not always scheming against all five guys. Sometimes all you're looking is just make one guy just get a little nervous in the service. Dude, well, when you said I thought we were gonna squeeze, I almost got triggered. I swear uh, to God, I've heard that <laughs> how many times? How many times? We're not squeezing on this one. I thought we were, dude. We've never said we squeeze this. Oh, <laughs> well, let's let's roll some actual tape here. So here's what I brought to the table for you guys. All look right, we got at. That you tell well, me right now what's not up there. The kitchen sink, everything else is Jesus. And this is, by the way, this is I think this is the second half of the third preseason game here. So you got the it's the it's the Vikings and Cardinals here. So I've got one because he Flores just got to the Vikings, so there's he's not showing a whole lot in the preseason, but he showed enough things that we can grab a clip here. And then I've got four clips from the Dolphins mm -hmm. in 2021 that we'll look at as well. So I'm going to I'm going to roll this and you guys uh, I'll roll it once and then roll we'll it. back it up and you guys tell me what, what you're seeing and how you ID it. All right. While you're rolling this, I'm going to explain how this is going to be tricky to ID. Hold on. Hold the on. rules change. The rules. OK, six oh. man, six man, six man protection. It's terrible. The, it's terrible. More like since no the rules protection. have changed, we just talked about a guy wearing zero. It was easier to identify guys. Notice how only two guys have their hands down. They are instantly considered down players because they have their hands in the ground, right? That's smart. The lat, like when we left the league, the next guy, two guys up had 90 numbers. So you was easy to find them somewhere, right? Now you look up, you see 20, I see 40 something, 45, 50, and uh, 51 and 59. And a 49. Yeah. Now becomes really hard because you have to remember numbers. So it's like when we get up there, these two will be down. And then you got to remember that 45 and 51 are down. And so it's like, dude, you get up there, you're going through number after number after number. Like, holy shit. Especially, in the, especially in the preseason. It's right. Hard. Like, especially in the preseason, you're just like, because like I told you, you didn't have to. Um, I got to take this call, guys. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's All cut right. week. It's cut it's, week. It's cut it's week. Cut Sorry. Week. You're good. You're good. You're good. Come back. Listen, like he was going to say, before you, we had 90 numbers, now you have 90 guys out there. So you have to know everybody. This is preseason. But in the regular season, it's still going to be extremely hard to identify, which is going to make Brian Flores' defense even tougher. Right? Like guys that come up and do stuff like this, and you continue moving guys around. And even if you keep changing up who it is, well, you have to remember so many numbers, right? Because in week one, they're going to be like, hey – we have a good source that says that 51 and 45 are their known rushers. Well, by week eight, they've got onto that. And so now they've changed 51 and 45 into two new players. And so now they're like, hey, if 51, 45, 49, and 62 are out there, you got to know all those guys. It's like, dude, <laughs> dude so here's you're writing another thing. The, too this many is what, guys. And, and this is what's fascinating to me. So you guys have, you know, you, you're IDing everything, and I want you to go through, like, exactly what you would ID here, Booney, but – the thing that I noticed right away is you got down lineman guy here, and then you've got 45 here, right? Yep. So these guys take multiple steps forward and engage with the interior offensive lineman. So you have you have to start the play blocking them. And then these guys both bail. So 
so they're, you know, they got seven guys at the line of scrimmage here. If you count 51 all the way through 20, but the two guys in the middle bail after engaging. So I don't know. You tell me and this, this is and just that's a, chaos and then, to me. And that's one of the added levels to this blitz, right? Like everybody's engaged. And then all of a sudden at the last second, two guys drop out. So two guys that were prepared to block people correct like the center's telling him right now hey we're sliding to the right he's telling him hey you have 45 i'm gonna take 50 so they're counting on those two guys rushing the minute that they step and drop i'm gone no you you can't kick out you've already gotten my attention you've taken a step forward i'm done i'm shutting it down look at 75 he's like oh no not this again so he's trying to do the best thing that he can he knows that if he's to help it's to help to your left so all yeah. of a sudden, because he's going to try and what push that guard out to get this guy that the running back's taking, because I'm, he's probably assuming that somebody's rushing out over here, and we've so talked. He wants about seventy-one this. to move left, and then correct in, in, in a perfect world. Okay, it's called an alert sin, and it's a sin because it's a sin to go against the protection, like in a Catholic church. So it's you're sinning this. You're basically saying, "Hey, go, 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 go back." And he's telling, and the center can do this to anyone because the center is the ringleader. So if the center's telling you to go back, you take your ass back right now. It's if the late, tackle though. were to tell me to go back, I'd be like, "Let me verify that real quick." Like you know, you you don't trust your tackles as much. But at the same time, he's just trying to save a life and help the running back. But at the same time, when forty five drops out, it keeps everyone from sliding out. 66 so, looks like he's oversetting a little bit. Like he's trying to think, what are we doing here? And he sees 45 coming too. So you have to remember, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. So unless I'm forcing him out with a go, go, go call, he's locked on that defensive end because he knows the number two. We're right. three for three over here. Unless one drops, then we can kick out. But we're a three, minute we're he's, three for three on the right side is what you're saying. Correct. These three guys. And, the, right? and if one of these guys on the right side drops out, we can get a go call to get to push back because sometimes this tackle can't see what the center's doing. So that's why the go call comes in. You'll hear go, 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 and everybody will just instantly start kicking one more guy out. And it has to be a super fast reaction because as you can see here, if they step up and then drop, you need people to be super high alert. And this is one of the things that we talked about is when you're playing a Brian Flores defense, in my mind right now, I would already have all of this taken down. So the minute in the game I saw that guy or I thought for any moment that he wasn't truly rushing me, I would be letting everybody know, hey, alert, 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 go, go. So the minute he drops, it's go, go, go. You're screaming, yeah. pushing, throwing people out there because if you don't, your quarterback gets hit, the ball comes out, and guess whose ass it is? Yours. So I have a couple of dumb questions here. I think you've I, I've watched enough film with you now and Jeremiah. I think Jeremiah is back from his. I'm back. Uh, I'm back. Jer so Jeremiah, for those of you that don't know, Jeremiah runs an agency, and this is NFL Cut Week. So literally at any time, yes. any time during dinner with the family, any time during a film review, he could have to answer. I got a phone. call last night at 11 p.m. <laughs> talking about this stuff. So yeah, there is no sleep over the next few days. But so it's what's we, so fun about it. Come on. Love so here's it. my and Jeremiah, we so we kind of broke down uh, the majority of this play. We'll move to some other plays, but I just I'm always looking for people to blame. You know me, I'm just a media joke uh, joker, right? So, but I know enough to know that you're working inside out. So yep. this guy, this number twenty coming off the edge here, uh, your priority if you're number sixty six is inside out. Correct. So, so running back is this is tough because these two guys are bailing, but they've already engaged with the center and the guard. And so, so 71 and 66 are engaged with their guys. So you've got free runner coming here, free runner what? coming here, and there's one running back to choose, right? Yeah, like this, this is this is what I was talking about, the flavor of the week. Like, unless you're prepared for this look, this is exactly how you have to pick it up. And you just like the quarterback rules, just has to get rid of by the rules, you have to try and just scream out, 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 go, 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 and try and get someone out oh, of there. Right. Um, uh, you know, but the hey, only go back way, real quick. So, so it, it kind well, of falls over. Go ahead. I, Here's so here's what's gonna happen, right? So put your OC hat on here, Mackie, and you go, okay, so here's if they come out in this look next week, right? Week one. So I promise you, they're gonna look at this and whoever they're playing week one is be like, hey, we have to figure out a way to stop this look when we get it. Right. And I think like the only way you can stop this look is you go full slide to the right. So you tell the whole offensive line you're all sliding, protecting your gap to your right. Right? Everyone. Right. So he's actually gonna have to go all the way out. He's not like ever, like all, like all yep. these guys. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Everyone's going to have to slide all the way out and someone's going to have to take two. And then you send 30 off the left side to take 51. Okay. Right. So that's, that's the only true answer you have to this blitz. 
And even then you're telling someone they got to take two, but the great thing, and it's like Boone said, there's going to be a nuance to this now where now they're going to say, okay, now I went sliding right. And now we're going to bring two guys back to the left. Right. Right. Like, so that's, what's going to happen. You're going to prep for to stop this blitz. And then he's just going to have another blitz off this exact same look, which is going to be the confusing part, which is then going to get home again. And then you got to prepare for that look. And I mean, it's just so many different looks out of this. It's so many different blitzes out of the same formations that they line up in. And it's so rolling some stuff here. Dude, you know why it's fun? Because this is the chess match while you're playing with physicality and you're like trying to guess, are we right? Are they right? Like, look at this right here. You are eight up. We joke about this. Eight up. You're like, who's going eight up? This dude does it on first down. He doesn't even care. And and, and eight the right up. Guard, the, right, the right guard gives palms before it's even snapped. He's like, dude, I don't watch, even know watch, how watch, many watch, guys watch. can be up here. 79's like, yeah, AMF, block them all. Right, and then sixty four is like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, wait, what? I'm, uh, he, uh, what, what, uh, whatever. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and Tyrod, and Tyrod tell, Taylor's like, the quarterback here, and he knows whatever happens, the ball needs to be out yeah, within a half second. Right so. now, listen. Anytime you see eight up, you better expect that if you're in the core, you're going to be blocking too, because you're going to be sliding one way or another. Like this is a look where you're like, I we're going to ID anybody we can, but at the same time, what can you guess here? You might as well just shore this up and slide left. And he tries to, but look, go back. Tunsil doesn't get out there. That's not Tunsil. That's not Tunsil. Who is that? This is from 2021, by the way. This is uh, Texans Dolphins. I don't know who that is either. It's all good. He his ass don't get out there. That's for sure. But this is this is what we're saying. Like this is how I told you we'd have to block it, right? This is the only way. You're going. Hey, full slide left. They're on the road. It's loud. 72's looking in. Right. They snap it, and he. 71 and 72 don't get the memo. I don't get what the hell those two idiots are doing. Right, You see the, the right side of the ball is all sliding left, and the left side of the ball is sliding right, and they're pinching the, they're pinching the center. And he just gets really lucky here that he gets the ball out. And how many guys end up coming? I think they Let's bring seven. Did they bring seven? Let's see here. I thought they brought four. Ah, there's ba- well, they're bailing. I mean, they bail, but initially they're seven. That's what right? I'm saying. Like, initially at seven ends up being four. So how does Imagine, that? I mean, that, that's the second that's, play in a row now, where two guys have have, have engaged. And, and that's his mo, work, right? That's his mo, and that's the problem because sometimes on the sideline, that's the question: how many guys rushed? And you could have Jeremiah over there, like I think seven, and me go, dude, I think only four came. Now all of a sudden, how confused do you think we are? Are you sure seven came? I'm almost positive everybody dropped out, and it's like right. that's what starts to happen in chaotic moments, and that's why these defenses thrive on O lines like this, dude. They this is Jaguars, Jaguars, Dolphins. This is rookie Trevor Lawrence from 2021 here, and there are seven Dolphins in Brian Flores. Oh, there's an eight. There's Hello. An eight. I Just brought gonna a friend. I'm going to come on up in there. Clearly, it's cover one. Someone's going to be running in the screen if the tight end comes in. I'm glitching out here. There we go. There we go. Bring the tight end in. Slide everyone inside. That's where you pick it up, just like I told you. You just gotta slide everyone and just tell everyone put two big. We used to call it in uh, in Carolina. It used to be called double stop signs. Right, you see the left yep. the left guard, right? The double stop signs, dude. You got to put a hand in each gap, right? You just gotta you gotta be the one that if you have to, you have to take two, right? Sixty eight, yep. right there. Double stop signs, Norwell. both hands, Norwell, right? Boom. You see the left tackles <laughs> doing the same thing. The left same tackle, thing. Look. left tackle in the center are doing the same thing. Yeah. Right, they're, they're both they're both just like I can't block a man. I have to block a gap. If I have to have each guy and I'm holding one with both arms, so be it, right? But that's just what they have to do here because that's the only way you can protect against this because you don't know who's coming and you don't know who's going to be dropping out or whatnot. You just have to slide and have your rules and eyes to your gap and backside presence. What's and the, the nice thing? While you're throwing ahead. both hands, the guy next to you is throwing both hands too. So right. you end up putting two hands on people, but it does become a little bit of a balancing act. So what is, before we get to this next one here, uh, this is, by the way, this is Ian Book, the former Notre Dame quarterback, in for the okay. Saints in 2021. So look it up, look good, up. Okay. good luck against this. Um, what, what's, the counter to this? <laughs> what's, the, what's the counter to this? So obviously, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to create sudden change. You know, the Flores defense trying to create third and 15s and get to the quarterback. But there's, there's got to be big plays available. There's a lot of one-on-one coverage, right? No safety over the top. What's the best way to punch back as an offense against this defense in general? You have to have your receivers win in one-on-one coverage. 
You got to burn them deep. You got to get the ball and like you got to have a quick slant. You have a quick slant or a go ball, and you just have to beat them with it, right? You have to make them think twice of doing this because if you send this many dudes up by the line of scrimmage, if you're Justin Jefferson on the outside, you're saying just put the ball in my hands. I'll make one corner miss or I'll shed off an arm tackle, and then it's house call, right? It's strike up the band. I'm hitting my head on the goalpost. Yep. And that's the only way you can get these defensive coordinators to back off with this stuff because as long as they keep throwing quick balls – and like check downs and they're getting bad at the line of scrimmage. You're just giving these defense and this D coordinator more and more confidence to keep coming back to it. You have to hit him on a few big plays. So like a Justin Jefferson, you got to go to him and be like, dude, listen, we're going slant right now. Anytime we get this eight up, we're slanting it right now. And you need to take it to the house because Jeremiah is right. The minute you do take one to the house, what's that D coordinator thinking? All right. Got to be a little bit smarter. Can't be can't be doing this the whole game, right? And then the next time he does it, hey, we're checking right into the same thing. You got to burn him again because it's just you versus the corner. There's a safety in the middle of the field, and if you can get by him, dude, we're not seeing this look a lot the rest of the game. But if we continue getting balls batted down or we continue giving up pressure or we don't hit our first read, they're just going to continue laying this on us, but, and it's going to get even worse. Well, this comes back to – was Xavier Howard still in Miami, the, the lockdown corner and safety? Uh, I believe he was in 2021. Was. Right? So, so that that plays a part in this too. You have a corner out there that you're like, listen, you're going on an island. Right? Like you're going on an island, so nut up or shut up, right? right. I don't know if the Vikings have that guy. Well, they don't have a, a Xavier Howard in his prime. By, Byron Murphy, who they who signed from the Cardinals, his his best attribute is single coverage. He's a good single coverage. And I, I watched a couple practices and the one-on-ones against like the Titans. And he... He looks the part, but they don't have like a Xavier Rhodes in his prime or a Reva. They don't have a guy like that. So. Right. Did you hear yourself, think... Maggie? What's that? His uh, Byron Murphy's attributes. <laughs> I, they, were, they, were, they were pretty so. He's a, he's a single coverage player. That's what Listen, I read. Don't make me pull up the PFF grades, okay? Oh, Do not don't... make me pull up the PFF grades. What does the media say? Tell me more. <laughs> But they have a bunch of young guys and rookies who have never really, you know, played right. full seasons besides Byron Murphy Jr. So it yeah. could be a problem. So you put them out there one on one with Christian Watson, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, hold on to your hats. You're hoping to get home. If you don't get home, like again, it that's how you stop it as an offense, is you burn them a couple times. Yeah. Or you just make sure you have a lot of success on first and second down. Right, that's the number one thing. Getting to third and three, third and two, third and five. Like, don't live in third and six plus because that's what this defense wants you to do big time. Yep. So, all right, here's a here's poor Ian Book here for the Saints against a little seven man front. I mean that that's just a running back being a piece a turd. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a back, that's just a running back being a turd. Oh, this sorry. is a great job. This is a great job. I love the how line. fired up you are right now. Um, dude, listen, I, I don't have a lot of love for anyone right now. That is um, a terrible cut. There's some terrible. hate in my heart. If my partner, Zach Zenner, was up here, he would throw up. He says you never, ever cut in the hole because no. this is why. At least go put your hat on him and die a slow death, right? Die a slow death. Like If you can just die a slow death here, you, you're going to give your quarterback a shot. This is a great job. Again, you see the double stop signs, right? Everyone knows it. You got to protect the gap. So you got the center with the stop sign on the backside protecting his A gap. The guard's sitting there going, all right, I might have to take 29. I might have to kick out and take 15 if eight comes. The left tackle's like, hey, we're all just protecting wow. our gaps, right? That's stop that's, signs. Yep, that's how you have to do this. That's how you have to protect against this blitz, right? And then 68 over here decides he wants to just give 91 his chest like an idiot. Um no big but, deal. <laughs> no big deal. You don't need your chest anyways. But this is just a terrible job by Kamara. This is an awful job by him. He almost took out the right tackle, too. And this yeah. is another thing. You, you, you never listen, cross you never, cut. You never you, cross cut. You never cut in the hole because that player coming around the hole could be the twister, like a looper. And I've been flagged before for that, for a high low. For high lows. Yep. Yes, where the, where the running back goes to cut, mm. and I'm going to switch on the looper, and all of a sudden we both touch him at the same time. Dude, we've been fine three, four times for that. It was like, grand. dude, stay up in the hole. You, and then you know who has to pay it? The old lineman. The old lineman. I was like, dude, I'm going to kill all of you. <laughs> <laughs> stay up in the hole. Dude, one of them was, uh, um, what's his name? The spin master, Dwight Freeney. He yeah. was pissed. I was like, dude, not my fault. Not my fault. Listen, not my fault. Our, my partner, again, Zach Zanner, he played running back for the Lions for five years. He made himself as a third down back. He will not recruit a running back, regardless of how well he is, if he can't pass protect. 
Yeah. Right. And it's one of the reasons our I we had an undrafted free agent, Chris Brooks, out of BYU, went down to Miami, was the best pass blocking running back on that team because he worked with Zach and he was good at it, made the team. Right. Like 230 pound back that can pass protect, you ain't getting out of the league because you can't have plays like that happen. It can't happen. Those are drive killers. Those are interceptions, sack fumbles. Like you have to have backs in this league that can pass protect. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, yeah, 2023. You can't be all due respect. He's a Hall of Famer, but like Adrian Peterson from 15 years ago, yeah. he's, he's like, you didn't put him on the field on third down. He was also so great on first and second down as a bell car running back that, you know, can't have guys like that. No. Worked out. No. So let's go to a Carolina Miami cut up here from 2021. PJ Walker is the quarterback for the Panthers. <laughs> Some cut. random Scott, quarterbacks Scott in this. got cut by the Bears again. Uh, oh, yeah. Some freaking D2 kid from Shepard made it mind blowing. It's terrible. So we got seven Dolphins on the line of scrimmage. Slide a lot of, left. Lot, lot Bradley of Bozeman. Bradley oh, Bozeman. Here's the tap. See the tap? Hey, dumbass. We're going left. Tell the tackle. Okay, Look. coach. Hey, we're going, going left. left. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going right. Right. We're going right. That's why he got cut. That's why you got cut. All <laughs> right. They blitz it from the other way. Oh, uh, we're going to leave one short. Uh, I got to sure take another are. phone call, boys. Call you. I'll be right back. Go okay. All right. It's cut okay. week. It's cut week. Go back. Jeremiah Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back right now. I, Mackie, you know you love it when I take control. Go back a little bit more. No, go the other way. Go, the go other all way. the way to the top here. I want to okay. see this. Okay. Okay. Listen, this is why. Here we go. You ready? This is why you never go against the center. Why? Because this dude's job is to protect you at all costs. So he's, he's probably saying, looking, we're going left. He's looking up going, hey, stupids. I saw this in the Saints game. We're going to go this way. Probably said something like LLL. See how he's telling the right guard? Keep going. He's telling mm -hmm. him, hey, just like Jay said, stupid. Tell stupid, stupid. We're going this way. Notice how he fixes his stance. He's like, all right, cool. Got it. Looks back. He's going to tap his hip. Go ahead and keep it going. That tap on the hip. Right. Up, oh, keep going. Keep going. Mm -hmm. There. See that? That tells the running back, I'm sliding down this way. I'm Quarterback comes up and goes, no, go the other way. Everyone's like, what? What are you talking about, dude? We're good that way. We need to go oh, this way. God. So why would P.J. Walker overrule what the center is calling here? I have no idea. I mean, dude, you should <laughs> listen. When you look up and see more guys to one side than the other, and the center's like, yeah, I'll take the party that way. You should not go, no, 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 go the other way. I got a feeling, dude, you are an idiot. Oh, run away. <laughs> run away. That was almost, almost a completion here. Look at this. Yeah, you know when it almost counts in a team meeting room? Nowhere. <laughs> hey, coach, I almost blocked him. You'd be like, yeah, well, we almost paid you, but we didn't. We were smarter than that. Stupid. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what PJ's thinking here. This is why you should never, and this is kind of like, you know, my gripe. Every now and then I get into it with the quarterbacks where I'm like, dude, why are you going against us? Like, our whole job is to be right and protect you, and we're always pretty much on it. That was stupid for him, and that's what you get. But it doesn't happen a lot. I will say that. When when we get to the line, when you have a good center and somebody that knows what's going on, normally he's making all the calls. He's up there. Everyone's talking. We're all doing the same thing. We get it. The quarterback doesn't have any issues. Very rarely, and a few times I've heard centers, they'll say that they got into it with the quarterback, but that is once every couple of years where it's like, I'm overruling you, and it's like all of a sudden the guards like kind of start to move over like, Dad, Mom said you're wrong. <laughs> you just start Mommy to slow. Mommy and Daddy are fighting, and there's three seconds left hey, on the play clock. <laughs> you're slowly moving away. Time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. Time out. <laughs> oh, it's the best. And you just stand there and they're like, auto! And you're like, I don't want to get in the auto. I don't want to get in the auto right now. Don't take me in there, please. And you get in there. What are you doing telling me I'm wrong? Defense is laughing. You guys are idiots. You don't even know what you're doing. You're like, shut up. Don't egg him on. Don't egg him on. So is it is it fair to say that like because we've we just you know gave you guys what five five clips of Brian Flores' defense across a couple teams? Is it fair to say that his style of of aggressive defense causes more of that having to sift through before the you know the play clock runs out? Does it does it make your life harder than yes. most defenses as an offense? Is Absolutely. it fair to say that? 
you line up in a Vic Fangio defense and it's basically what can I do versus what he can do. And it's like, as long as I've prepared all week and I'm ready to go, this should be an equal matchup, right? Like we're both pros. We go out here as long as I stay in the B gap, I'll switch a twist every now and then, but I have to be fundamentally sound. When you get up against Brian Flores defense, it's exactly what Jay said. Who wasn't paying attention this week? Oh, shit. Here we go, boys. It's when you see eight guys up, when you see seven up, at times it looks like more than it really is. And the coach is like, how many guys are up there? You're like, 10. I swear there was 12. Yeah. At times there might have been 14. Like there's just so many guys. And then the numbers keep changing. And it's just like the offense. When the numbers move around, it makes you start to think, he was over here last time. Why is he over there? Why is this guy over here? Where was he last time? I wasn't paying attention to him. What did he do? Hey, what would you guys get over there? You know, it's like all of a sudden you're asking questions. You're a lot. When you become a really good line and your gap sound, I will say that's when – and people probably misunderstand me when I say this, but it becomes really fun when you know your offense inside and out and you know you're playing a defense that has to be extremely sound in what they're doing. It's almost like it goes back to the old when you're playing an undisciplined defense, anything can happen. You don't know. So you have to be on high alert a lot of times. You're like, these guys are stupid. They could fall in the wrong gap. We don't know what could happen. When you're playing a defense that's like, hey, you're in this gap or we're going to give up an 80-yard touchdown – you're, you're, it's chess. Now you're having fun. Are we right? Were we right in our guests? Were we wrong in our guests? Did they add the nuance? Have they showed us what's going on? Like all these things become really fun, but that's only when you truly trust the four other guys out there where you're like, yeah, I could say that all of us would ace the test right now if it were on paper. But when you go in thinking this guy might have doubt, there's a lot of times at timeouts you're talking to that guy. Hey, you're, you're good on this, right? You remember if we kill it and we go Mazda, we're back in, right? You got this, right? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sure you got this, right? Like, that's when Jay comes and Jay, talk to him. Talk to him real quick. Make sure he gets this real fast. Like, yeah. Because it panics you. And then the quarterbacks know who knows and doesn't know. And guess who else gets panicked? And then all of a sudden, they're like, hey, you talked to him about that thing. We, we talked to him about that check, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We told him. But Jay's going to talk to him again just to make sure he really understands what's going on. Like, it's a lot of prep work as opposed to the guys that run a 4-2, just twist every now and then. It's like, ah, oh, just got to be strong right here and over here. Got it. It's not, I have to be cerebral while being strong. Like, this is why football becomes really fun when you get advanced. Yeah. Welcome wow, back. Welcome back. This whatever, is great. Whatever he, whatever he said. Every as every ten minutes, I love it. Jeremiah is on an important football call. Listen, here. good work. Hey, I got. I have a client driving home from Detroit right now. Team wants to come work him out. Can't say the team. They're like, "Well, where is he?" It's like, "Well, he's driving home from Detroit." They're like, "Well, we want him here by tomorrow." I was like, "Well, he'll be in Chicago in an hour and a half." So I called him. I was like, "Park your car at the airport. You're flying out of Chicago to go for a workout, oh, man." And then he'll have to fly back to Chicago if they don't sign him, and pick up his. Car what if they him. do sign him? Who's Figure getting his out. car? You ship, you ship the <laughs> car. Welcome to the league, <laughs> rookie. <laughs> That's the way she goes, bud. Listen, if I would have told, if I would have told the team, if I would have told the team, like, well, he's driving home. We probably need to wait oh, till tomorrow. They'd have been like, oh yeah, sure, sure. And then guess what? Next guy on the list. Boom. Can he come be here tomorrow? Yep, sure can. They'll call me back. Hey. Ah, we're going in a different direction. Yeah, you, you better say you yes. thought it wasn't the wild, wild west. It is. And that's – And let's just stop for a minute and talk about how fun We'll get into that. On, let, let's get it on uh, – we'll, we'll get into that actually, on, on a film breakdown. We'll no, get into we'll that do, on an actual podcast. On the podcast, we'll talk about Cut Week. We'll cut talk week. about we Cut will, Week. We have podcast. to talk about Cut Week. Yes. Um, all right. If you guys like these film reviews or if you like the full O-Line Committee podcast – Click that subscribe button. Click the like button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel and over on Apple and Spotify, too, for the podcast. If you could give us a five-star rating and a positive review, uh, the only show in America where a fan gets to ask dumb questions and watch film with two former NFL offensive linemen. And uh, there's your uh, Brian Flores chaotic defense breakdown. Hit us up in the comments section. We'll see you next time. Your graphics are the best. I know. <laughs>